Hello, and welcome to episode 56 of A Week in Watches, a weekly look back at news, stories, releases, and more from the watch industry. I'm your host this week, Zach Weiss, co-founder of Warner Wound. Thanks for joining me. Oh boy, you're in for a doozy this week. Lots of good stories, including one in particular that I am personally very excited about. Sneak peek involves a perpetual calendar. More on that later. There's plenty of other good stories too. Before we get into it, please like and subscribe. We uh, you know, do really appreciate it. And for those people out there who always ask, why would I like and subscribe before I watch the video? Honestly, I don't know. It's just what people say at the beginning of videos to encourage subscribing because it really does make a difference for the reach of our channel. It makes the, you know, frankly hard work worth it. Uh, you're welcome to like and subscribe after the video as well. I don't mind. On my wrist today is the Fairer X Warner Wound Limited Edition. We're actually launching this the day of recording. It hasn't happened yet. I'm hoping it goes well. I've been working on this project for a really long time. This week's sponsor is Wind Up Watch Fair Chicago. Yes, we're headed back to the Midwest for the second time and we're super excited for it. There will be over 40 brands. The show starts July 14th. Stay tuned for later in the show for a deeper look at this year's fair. It's gonna be a good one. Our first story, Louis Arard x Messina Lab Part 2. For those who don't know the players here, Louis Arard is a Swiss watch brand that has been rekindled in recent years through a combination of high profile collaborations with such horology figures as Vianney Halter, Alain Silberstein, Konstantin Chenkin, and of course, William Messina. While they make watches of different styles, they are known quite specifically for their regulators, which is a three hand watch with hour, minute, and seconds hand on separate axes. So who is William Messina? Well, he's a longtime person of interest in the world of watches and watch collecting. He was pivotal in the growth of Time Zone Watch Forum. He's worked at auction houses and in retail. And he is the proprietor of Messina Lab, a brand that both makes their own line of high-end homage watches and collaborates with other brands on unique pieces. Last year, Louis Arard and Messina teamed up for a neo-traditional take on the regulator that was refreshingly elegant. They featured a dial surface with a stippled texture meant to evoke hand finishing rendered in either gold or rhodium tones. But that was last year and they are already sold out. So what's new? Well, they teamed up again for a new collaboration, but this time based around a single register mono pusher layout. And rather than starting from scratch, they based it on the aesthetic they honed in on from the previous collaboration. So you'll find the same stippled surfaces in gold or rhodium, but rather than two subdials, there is a single large subdial at 12 for the 30 minute counter. The space at six is left open, save branding for both Louis Arard and Messina. Interestingly, the index circling the dial has the same layout as before, but now serves as the hour, minute, and elapsed seconds index, which frankly works just fine. It's a striking variation on a design with already fairly uncommon if traditional styling as the single large register at 12 changes the balance of the dial quite dramatically. This effect is also increased by the size of the watches themselves. They're fairly large. The diameter of 43 millimeters, lug to lug of 50.4 and a height of 15.7. So they look like pocket watches and are nearly the same size too. Regardless of scale, they look fantastic to my eyes. Dubbed Le Chronograph Mono Pussar Louis Arard X Messina Lab, they're powered by Salida SW500 MPCA calibers, are limited to 178 pieces per color, and cost 4,250. Head to either Louis Arard or Messina Lab's websites to pick one up. I'm curious, what do people think of this type of design? Is neo-traditional poised for a comeback? All right, next, Omega is feeling kind of blue. Aw, oh, sad Omega. Okay, okay, they feel just fine. In fact, they are celebrating. What are they celebrating, you might ask? An anniversary, of course. Not just any anniversary, the 75th anniversary of the Seamaster, which feels like a proper year to celebrate. Not one of those random years they're trying to make seem important, like 61 or 38, but rather three quarters of a dang century. And how are they celebrating? Well, by launching not one, not two, but 11 watches in what they call Summer Blue, which is sort of a palette of gradients rather than a single color that corresponds to the maximum depth of that watch. It's all meant to demonstrate the range of the Seamaster line, which in all fairness includes watches with fairly diverse styles and capabilities. Now they say 11, but that is a tiny bit of an exaggeration as that includes some strap options with the same watch. Nevertheless, an impressive array. So let's run through them fairly quickly. In the shallow waters, you have the Aquaterra 150 meter, 38 and 41 millimeter models, both with dials in a shimmering silvery blue with the 41 millimeter version also featuring a series of horizontal lines. They refer to as the teak pattern, which is meant to resemble the deck of a luxury yacht. 
I'll have to take their word for it. These models start at 6,400. Staying at 150 meters is the Seamaster World Timer, which we also just saw some new models of a few weeks ago. Anyway, this model is a Vision in Blue, which happens to work very well with the concept as the map at the center features large areas of ocean. I still wish they would make these smaller, but man, it looks great in light blue. These start at 9,900 on rubber. Descending to 300 meters, we have the aptly named Seamaster 300. Note, this is not the Diver 300 that comes later. Rather, this is the vintage-inspired 41mm model drawing on the 1957 original. Here you will find a more dramatic gradient with the center of the dial featuring light blue darkening to a medium blue that also makes its way to the bezel. This model goes for 7400. Now we have the Diver 300 meter, which is their core modern diver with a 42 millimeter case and a love it or leave it helium escape valve at 10. This model features the same gradient, however, the dial is ceramic and has their iconic wave pattern on it. These start at 5,900. Hold your breath, now we're hitting 600 meters with the Planet Ocean. While deeper diving than the previous model and a bit more toolish in its style, Omega went with the 39.5 millimeter case on this model, rather than the 43.5 millimeter, which the line also comes in. As you might have guessed, there is a blue gradient here, getting even darker along the edge of the vertically brushed dial, which is matched with the bezel, too. There are also blue hands and blue loom, all the blue. You too can be blue for 7400. We quickly double our depth to 1200 meters with the Tank of the Seas, the watch that puts the OMG in Omega, the Plaprof. A divisive watch if there ever was one, its large size, guarded left hand crown and unique push button bezel system makes it unmistakable. While the models mentioned thus far have just gotten a makeover in terms of coloration, the Plaprof is actually an overhauled model. While this watch had been reintroduced a few years back to their catalog uh, in titanium, favorite. This is likely a replacement or update. Measuring 55 millimeters wide, yeah, and 45 millimeters lug to lug, this new model is actually touched shorter than the previous, which were 48 millimeters, making it closer to the original version from the 70s. In addition to the size, Omega also went back to a monoblock construction, a detail from the original. This means that the mid and case back are machined from a single piece of metal, and the movement dial, etc. are all top loaded in. But rather than using 316L or titanium, they use their proprietary Omega steel. O Omega steel? O Omega. Anyway, it's a steel that, through a process with the best name ever, pressure electro slag remelting, so good, achieves a high level of purity and strength for a better shine and greater durability than conventional steel. Pressure electro slag remelting. I just wanted to keep saying it. In terms of looks, yes, it's all blue with an even more extreme gradient, starting at silver blue at the center and nearly black, though still noticeably blue at the dial edge and on the bezel. The Plowprof is priced at $14,300. Finally, we hit bottom with the Ultra Deep, Omega's 6,000 meter diver, a tribute to their concept watch that was strapped to a submarine that went to the deepest point of the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench at a terrifying 10,935 meters, setting the world record. While 6,000 meters is less than nearly 11,000, it's still an insane amount for a wristwatch. Of course, it measures 45.5 by 51.9 and 18.1 millimeters tall. But who is counting at this point? You're not buying this watch for discretion. For the 75th anniversary edition of the Ultra Deep, Omega did do something a little different and actually etched or engraved an exact representation of the topography of the Challenger Deep taken by Sonar, I believe, by the team that set the record. It's very cool looking and a little bit creepy too, especially matched with the darkest gradient yet, going from visible at the center to an abyssal black at the edge. This watch also features an Easter egg. Under UV light, a hand-drawn map of sorts appears, as do the words, Omega was here. It's very well done. This model goes for 13,000. Wow, that was a lot of blue Omegas. Uh, do any of these stand out to you? What do you think of the new Plaprof? I'm very interested. And now, a little bit about Wind Up Watch Fair Chicago 2023. After a successful weekend in San Francisco, the highly anticipated Wind Up Watch Fair is heading back to the vibrant city of Chicago from Friday, July 14th through Sunday, July 16th, 2023. Returning to Venue West in the heart of the West Loop, we're excited to reconnect with the energy and excitement that makes the Windy City such an integral hub among our community. Now in its ninth year, Wind Up Watch Fair uh, has become a must attend event for watch enthusiasts, collectors, and industry professionals. The fair showcases a wide range of watches from indie brands to well-established manufacturers, offering attendees an unparalleled chance to discover and experience a diverse selection of timepieces from brands like Citizen, Fortis, G-Shock, Oris, and Zodiac. 
And thanks to its success in San Francisco, we're going to keep EDC Alley going in Chicago with brands like Finch Knife Co., Giant Mouse, and even regional brands like Oak Street Bootmakers. Again, it'll be at Venue West, located at 221 North Paulina Street in the West Loop neighborhood of Chicago from Friday, July 14th through Sunday, July 16th, 2023. Visit windupwatchfair.com for a full list of participating brands. Can't wait to see you there. Speed round. Okay. There's one more big story I want to cover, but I also didn't want to skip out on some of the cool stuff that dropped this week, as well as something that perhaps should have been in last week's episode. So I'm going to go through them quickly now. First is Tissot and the 35mm PRX, which came out a couple of weeks ago now. I guess that's really the whole story. Tissot has released a 35mm version of their beloved integrated bracelet sports watch, the PRX, uh, with a Powermatic 80 automatic movement, uh, meaning it has 80 hour power reserve. The PRX line is pretty vast at this point with quartz versions, automatics, chronographs, multitudes of dials, various straps, uh, and even a model with an 18 karat gold bezel. But until now, the automatic version was limited to 39.5 millimeters, which is actually a really nice size for this type of watch. But now there's an even smaller option as well. 35 millimeters sounds tiny, but will likely wear larger than expected due to the integrated design. Coming in at 695, these are a crazy good value and a great way to dip your toes into integrated bracelets. All right, up next, Oris finally gives us the 38 millimeter Diver 65 in steel. Okay, the Oris Diver 65 38mm has existed for a couple years now, but was for some reason only available in either bronze or as a limited edition. Well, finally, Oris is launching their Vintage Diver line in the Goldilocks sizing and in steel and with a Solita base caliber, but not yet with a black dial. They've gone back to their cotton candy colors for a trio of sweets for the summer. So you have bright blue, green, or pink, all with machined steel bezels, which looks very nice and helps balance the saturated dial colors. These watches are available now and cost $2,350 on a Perlon strap or $2,550 on a bracelet. Round three, Timex teams up with Cara Barrett for a collaboration. If you have been in the watch collecting scene for a little while now, you are likely no stranger to a former Hodinkee editor and Parchipal founder, Cara Barrett. Well, Timex called upon her creative prowess to create a watch and the result was quite pleasant. The case is 36 millimeters and it's actually a new design for the collaboration uh, and features classic line. The cabochon style crown, which is perhaps a hint at some luxury brands, is a standout visual feature. The dial is then a soft powder blue with raised brigade numerals for a modern but classic look. Inside is a three hand manual wound movement. It all comes together with a metal stretch bracelet that features toolless adjustable links, uh, which is very convenient. Price at $249 is a solid value with a nice amount of style. Okay, on to our last story, and it's a big one. Furlan Marie breaks the rules. Where to begin with this one? Okay, you are likely familiar with Furlan Marie, but if not, here's a quick overview. It was founded by Andrea Furlan, a Swiss watch designer, and Hamad Al Marie, a watch collector from the Middle East. In 2021, they launched their Mega Quartz powered Tasty Tondi homage watches on Kickstarter, which pulled in over a million Swiss francs and became an immediate collectible. Examples on the secondhand market demanded several times the original price for a time. Uh, since then, they have cooled off. That same year, and this is still quite mind-blowing, they won the Horological Revelation Prize from the GPHG. This is an award for brands not older than 10 years and includes winners like Ressens, Laurent Ferrier, and Ming. Furlan Marie stands out as they won the year they launched and with a relatively inexpensive quartz watch, not your typical GPHG award winner. Since, they've gone on to release a handful of other watches, including mechanical sector dials, and seem to be doing quite well. Uh, the reason I'm talking about them today is that the 2023 Only Watch auction participants have begun to be announced, and with them come some pretty wild watches. So what's Only Watch? Well, it's an auction of one-off watches to raise funds for research on and awareness of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It happens every other year in Geneva, and this year will actually mark the 10th edition, making it a bit of a milestone. The brands that participate are generally amongst the biggest and most recognizable in luxury watchmaking from both large groups and independents. Think Patek, Tudor, Breguet, Tech Heuer, Bulgari, Blancpain, etc., but also Urwerk, Moser, Vutalan, and F.P. Jorn, MBNF, yada yada. So in 2021, when Baltic participated, it felt like a big deal. That was the first brand from the so called microbrand scene to be included. Back to Furlan Mari, yes, they will be participating in the 2023 auction in November, just two ish years from their launch. That's news unto itself, but the watch they are auctioning is kind of mind blowing. 
Not kind of, it is mind blowing. You see, in just two years from launch, they, with the help of some admittedly very experienced industry veterans, have created their own secular perpetual calendar module and put it in a watch. So what's a secular perpetual calendar? Well, if a perpetual calendar is an annual calendar that knows when the leap year is and automatically adjusts for it, a secular calendar knows the rare occasion when they are skipped and accounts for that as well. It's like a perpetual perpetual calendar or maybe a perpetually perpetual calendar. Yeah, I like that. Basically, once every 400 years, the leap year gets skipped. The next time this will happen is actually 2100. On that year, all classic perpetual calendars will need to be adjusted to skip February 29th. Furlan Marie's won't. If you're thinking, I've never heard of this before, you wouldn't be alone. They are incredibly rare versions of an already uncommon complication, with Anderson Genève being the only that comes to mind, and I believe actually the first to have come to market with one in the 1990s, at least in wristwatch form. Okay, so the tally right now. Two-year-old microbrand that made affordable watches is part of the upcoming Only Watch auction. They made a secular perpetual calendar to enter. As though that wasn't enough, they also made it modular, and worked to simplify it for ease of use and manufacturability. So how did they do this? Well, they teamed up with Dominique Renault, an expert in grand complications, who was one half of Renault and Papi, a legendary complication development house that was eventually bought out by AP, and Julien Tizier, a young and highly regarded independent watchmaker. The resulting module is patented and features 25 components for the perpetual calendar and five components for the secular function. It's paired with a Le Jupere G100 automatic caliber. Wait, there's more? Well, setting perpetual calendars is notoriously tricky and can result in damaging the movement. So they developed a ring-shaped corrector that is manipulated between the lugs of the watch. Pushing it one way adjusts the days of the week and the other sets the date and presumably cycles the month all with no risk of damaging the movement. In terms of display on the dial of the watch, yeah, we haven't even talked about the watch itself yet. The layout is fairly conventional, save one detail. The date is read by small hand at three and the day on the other side at nine. The month is displayed around the edge of the dial and indicated by a central pointer hand. It wouldn't be a perpetual calendar, however, without a leap year indicator, but at a glance, there doesn't appear to be one. Well, it's actually a small Maltese cross that is part of the back of the pointer hand. And when the red portion is visible at the end, it's a leap year. Of course, they aren't auctioning a movement or a concept, but rather a watch. So the watch is 39 millimeters and 11.3 millimeters thick. It's made out of rhodium plated silver. The dial is made out of titanium and features regions in blue and regions with a blasted texture, all with engraved indexes. The subdials are skeletonized, allowing a view of the hand decorated module below. The hands were made by Julien Tissier, who also decorated the movement, save the rotor, which was beveled by Dominique Renault and engraved by Coralie Mercier. Lastly, it features a a handmade rhodium silver plated Milanese mesh bracelet by Laurent Joliet. So it's a luxurious execution through and through befitting of the auction. What will it go for? No idea. I would expect quite a lot, but to be honest, I think the fact that it exists and was made by this group of people is the best part of the story. A young brand like Furlan Marie working with a legend like Renault to create a module for a complication that is notoriously difficult and thus expensive will likely send shockwaves in the industry. Like the Christopher Ward Bel Canto, this is a bold move that shows what is possible by a young brand functioning outside of the big luxury groups. You know, this could really be a game-changing moment. Needless to say, while the watch at auction is a one-off, I'm hoping given that the secular perpetual calendar complication was developed as a module and patented, that we'll see it used again soon in a watch you and me can get their hands on. What do you think of this project? Am I crazy to think this is so amazing? Are perpetual calendar it's even cool. Do you care about what happens every 400 years? Uh, let us know. And that's it for week 56. Quite a week. Please give us a like and subscribe. It means a lot. Wind Up Chicago is just around the corner. We hope to see you there. All the deets are available at windupwatchfair.com. And of course, visit wornandwound.com daily for more watch news, reviews, podcast videos, and more. We'll see you next time.